Thank you very much, Senator Merkley. Thank you to all the witnesses. This has been a very helpful and productive hearing, and I always appreciate it when a bipartisan panel can produce so much uh, consensus and agreement on a particular issue. So uh, thank you for all the work that has led to that being the case today, uh, particularly you, Chairman Merkley. Um, the University of Rhode Island has done a study recently looking at the top five centimeters of uh, the sediment in Narragansett Bay, which is our main uh, resource and geographic feature. Um, and we are, we are loaded with uh, more than 16 trillion pieces of microplastic, which if we could sort it all out from the sediments around it, would be a thousand tons. Um, we also try to grow quahogs in that sediment and catch fish that feed off of that sediment and so forth. So um, there's a pretty distinct likelihood of transit, particularly of nanoparticles, up through the food chain. So this has a real Rhode Island resonance to it. Um, one of the things that um, I've been working on is trying to keep tabs with the U.S. effort in the U.N. negotiations that were discussed earlier. And I'm interested in hearing your recommendations to the U.S. negotiators. Um, assuming that the Senate schedule allows, I'll be going up to Ottawa for the next meeting. Uh, then there's the Our Oceans Conference coming up in Greece, which will, I'm sure, have a fairly significant piece on this. Um, I remember when President Trump was all excited about getting plastics out of the ocean and mad at China for dumping it all and all of that, but every time you actually read a story, the story was all the other nations of the world complaining that the U.S. was the laggard, that we were the anchor that they had to drag, that of all the countries in the world, uh, we were least productive, helpful, and constructive in those international negotiations. So that wasn't so great. Um, what would you give, what, what, would you, what message would you like me to convey to the negotiators when I go and harass them more about what the key points are that you would judge as being success points or failure points in those negotiations? Dr. Brander, let me start with you. Sure. Thank you, Senator Whitehouse, for the question. Um, and I'll just interrupt to say, I take it as a given what um, Dr. Mason said, that bigger is better. Big you want to get out of the system before it's become nano-sized. Yes. But go on around that. Absolutely correct. And I am a member of the Scientist Coalition, which is a group of international scientists that is advising the delegates to um, the All UN negotiations. Um, you're, involved, you're, you're advising the entire delegate pool, not just the U.S. delegation. Th that's correct. Correct. That's correct. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, yes. A lot of scientists from Europe and Asia and other parts of the world. Um, Thank you for that. Sure. And in terms of the main, the main critical issues, um, really chemical simplification, so reducing the enormous amount of chemicals that are used in the manufacture of plastics, and I, I think I've already quoted the 13 to 16,000 number, that's really one of the biggest problems that we need to tackle, and simplifying the number of chemicals that are used will make circularity, which is one of the biggest goals of these negotiations, more feasible, because right now, given the number of chemicals that are contained it's in each of those plastics, improbable. that's right, and then the new cocktails that are created from recycling them is a huge challenge. Um, there was a recent paper published that uh, estimated healthcare costs from exposure to those plastics associated chemicals in the US is about 249 billion annually. So not, not, a small, not a small number. So that, that I would say is one of the biggest challenges, as well as potentially banning polymers that are particularly problematic, like mm -hmm. PVC and polystyrene. 
Um, so chemical simplification, polymer simplification, a better transparency in terms of corporations making data available on the composition of their products. Um, and then another huge challenge, With, of course, for instance, a registry that anybody could go and yep, look to. Yep, a registry, an international registry has been proposed. Um, additionally, there's a huge environmental justice issue here. And although these practices have been reduced, plastics are still being shipped to countries that don't have the waste management capabilities to deal with them. And so that is another big, the environmental justice a human rights issue is a huge overriding issue. And I think what um, the feeling is on the perspective from the U.S. is that there is a lot of support for fossil fuel companies that are aiming to shift their business from producing fuels to producing plastics, right? We know natural right. gas. And, and so that, I think, is, is one of the biggest challenges in the U.S. is that the perception that we are supporting this... Um, shift in business strategy of fossil fuel companies to producing more single-use plastics. Yeah, well, the chairman is familiar with my observation about the fossil fuel industry, that they have essentially two business strategies. One is to produce fossil fuel, and the other is to control Congress and manipulate politics so that they can do so violating the laws of economics mm -hmm. that would otherwise require them to put the price of their pollution into their product. Milton Friedman is scowling down uh, at them. And so, I don't, Chairman, it's up to you. I've gone over my time already. If you wanted to allow the other two to answer, or if you want to do it, wait for a second round, I'm at your disposal. If you have additional to answer on this question, and then I do have some more questions, and I suspect you might as well. I just support what she said. She covered it? She, she covered it, no. Uh, Mr. Rosnack? Likewise, I'm, I'm not nearly as familiar with uh, this as Dr. Brenner is, so I uh, appreciate her comments. Okay. I'll flag one last thing, which is that there is a uh, Unilever. It's quite a big company that we've worked with for a long time, and they have come up with a proposal that I think kicks in this coming year where it will be their pledge, their plan, to remove from the ecosystem a pound of plastic for every pound of plastic that goes out into the world, which, among other things, creates a market for that plastic and to go to the places, to your point, uh, Dr. Brander, about economic justice, to the places where this stuff is piling up so that there are like knee-high rack lines of plastic along shores and you have to push your boat out through floating seas of plastic to get out to clear water, suddenly it makes a lot more sense to clear that up, even if it's not being properly and fully recycled, at least it's the hell out of those people's immediate experience. And to put money behind that, to be able to buy that waste plastic in order to make good on your pledge, seems like sort of the corporate front line on this too. And I hope American companies take the lead uh, to match, take the lead, follow and match that. <laughs> Thanks, Chairman. Yeah, thank you.